Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to another movie review of the Friday the 13th franchise. And now I'll move on to the next entry. Is um has been a fa has been a favorite to many other to many other fans of this franchise, and that is Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Now Jason Lives, hence the title of Jason Lives, because people were not satisfied with Part 5: A New Beginning because there was no Jason in it, so. They decided to bring him back, and this time it's now it's the undead. Now it's Jason undead, who's now like a zombie with supernatural stuff to him. You know, he has like this strength and stuff. So, and it's directed by Tom. This time it's Tom, directed by Tom Mc, Mc, McLaughlin. Watch, I think he did a good job directing the film, and um, and once again, good score by Harry Manfred Han, Han, Manfredini. And the film is shorter than the previous two films. It's only at 87 minutes. So it's good, very fast paced. And a more cool, we get more cool deaths in the film. And, and the film was, 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 pray, was by, the film, um, on IMDb and the Rotten Tomatoes, has a much higher range than the previous films because they've because they're glad they they brought Jason back and has a f I think it was a some I forget the rating on IMDb but it has a 52 percent on Rotten Tomatoes like it's like the highest rating on Rotten Tomatoes since the first film. Um, and box office wise, it made much lower than the previous films though, but still a success on a budget of three million, it made like about 19 million. Um. And they, get, they still once again got the character Tommy Jarvis again coming back, but this time it's played by a different guy, by the name of uh, Tom Matthews, which they really asked John Shepard to play the older Tommy in Part Five, but he didn't want to. Excuse me. Uh, but they asked, so they brought this guy in, and other cast members you have Jennifer Cook who plays Megan and uh, David Kagan as the sheriff. And I really enjoy this one. This one is definitely I would definitely put the, I would definitely put this as one of my favorites in the series. Definitely, as many people like this film as a favorite of the, of the franchise. And it opened and this film the film was released. It was the film was released was August first, nineteen eighty six. So once again, year after the next one, previous one. And this opened at the same weekend as Howard the Duck did, which was also August first, nineteen eighty six. So yeah, this film opened the same weekend as Howard the Duck. It's kind of fun, find kind of funny. But um, as as for Jason lives, um, Tommy and his friend, uh, this guy named um, Haas, and Tommy, he's still traumatized about the stuff that has happened, and they go, they they, they plan to. Tommy wants to get rid of Jason once for all, so he wants to go to his grave, and burn and burn him, so so he might be be gone from this earth. Now it's like Jason belongs to hell, belongs in hell. And he takes to his grave, and you see him; he's completely dead. He's a corpse, a rotting corpse, a rotting stiff, webbed webs and maggots. But. He gets like all the things from like the from number four with Corey Feldman's hearing saying die, die, and that messes with messes with his, messes with his head again and takes a metal pole and just starts stabbing him, and then lightning strikes and it resurrects Jason and. Then he kills uh, Jason. Kills his friend. Kills his friend Hosmer. Rips his heart out, which is a good death. Like goes right through him and just has his heart and falls in the coffin. He was gonna set him on fire, but it starts raining, so he runs away. And you have while well, um, while Crystal Lake, Camp Crystal Lake has now been re been renamed as Camp Forest Green, and. The first time you see at a, at a summer camp, you have children at the camp. 
children, a whole bunch of children are there. And Tommy, he goes to the sheriff, saying that Jason, Jason is alive, but he knows who he is, so he thinks he's going crazy. So he locks him up. And while... And and with and while it's going on, um, uh, two a, a couple who's driving who's driving to the camp. One, the fe female is actually played by Tom, Mc the director, um, Tom McLaughlin's wife. And the other guy, who is on, um, is actually in his film debut, his first role, Tony Goldwyn. And I was like, hey, cool, Tony Goldwyn, Toby Go Tony, Tony Goldwyn, which four years later, in 1990, makes a big in Ghost. And then later, a voice Tarzan, the 1999 Disney film. And then The Last House on the Left, and recently starred in The Belko Experiment. But yeah, Tony Goldwyn, this was, this was his, his first film. It was, it was nice to see him. I like, I like Tony Goldwyn. I think, he's an, I think he's such an underrated actor, you know? I don't know why, it's just he has that presence, that, that, that presence to him, you know? I, I, that's why I enjoy, I enjoy Tony Goldwyn. I liked him. In the remake of the Last House of the Left, I liked him. Um, actually, in the Belko Experiment, I liked I liked him in the film, and I actually overall liked the Belko Experiment. I had to review that film sometime. It came out early this year, and by the time I saw it, I liked it. And I thought Tony Tony Goldwyn did a good job in the Belko Experiment. So yeah, it was nice to see him in this his first role. They see Jason, and. And you get you get like um, sort of the early like um, it's not like parodies or something like that, but it's like the opening when it shows um, when it shows like Jason, his eye, and you see uh, Jason again doing like a James Bond style, like the opening of the James Bond, except you know slashes and it cuts to the title Jason Lives, like the opening of James Bond. You know James Bond walk in then shoots. It's like this way here, and then. And you got the grave digger who's like burying the coffin. And he, he's like, he's like, he's like, like right here. And then he looks right at the camera. It's like, um, these. I was like, what was the line he says? He looks at the camera like this. Um, some teens like found have so five have six ways to, has six ways to think of entertainment. I forget what the actual line was, but it was something like that. He goes and looks at the camera and thinks of enter somewhat entertainment. The word enter entertainment is in the sentence, and then. Um, and then the Tom McLaughlin's wife, who plays uh, the, uh, uh, um, the partner to Tony Goldwyn, is like, um, I've seen enough horror movies where where any weirdo in a mask is not good. So, like, Jason, he pops a tire, puts the spear to the windshield, and kills Tony Goldwyn. He spears him and throws him over his head. And then <laughs> Tom McLaughlin's wife... So the killer takes out her money or credit card. Like, Here, take the money. She looks up, sticks the spear right through her head, and you see like the, the um, the credit card, the American Express. And and then the sheriff, has, the sheriff has been dealing with you know with Tommy throughout the sp sprackly throughout the whole movie. He wants to prove that Jason is still alive. With the J which the sheriff doesn't believe in one of these still alive, you know, says cut it out. No one talks about that anymore. And out in the woods, you have like these people like doing these like exec exec games. Jason, he kills one of the guys who has a machete, rips his arm off, and then he senses him flying to the tree, slams his face in the tree, and then when he does like this, there's a smiley face on the tree. And And with um, with with three other people who are doing the games, Jason just comes, acts like a ninja. He like silently, he jumps down from above the trees, takes the machine, and just goes and decapitates all three of them at once. All of them, and then there's this one nerdy guy who's doing the games. He like stands there, shoots a paintball at him. He does like this. And actually, for that one scene, um. There are two. There are two people who played Jason in this. Throughout the for 
except for the paintball scene, um, Jason is, except for, the, yeah, except for the one paintball scene, Jason throughout the whole movie is played by a guy named uh, C.J. Graham, and they got him, and uh, they got him, like, originally it was supposed to be Dan, Dan Bradley, who plays Jason, which, Dan Bradley, I guess they, he was not the right choice for the Jason overall, but they kept his scene, his only one scene, which was the paintball scene, that was the only scene that Dan Bradley plays Jason, and then for the whole film was C.J. Graham because also that's cool that uh, C.J. Graham he's a I guess he was a he was a, he was an arm he was in the army soldier and you get to see some of his um some of his stuff you know like his army skills in the film as playing Jason I thought was kind of cool but for Dan Bradley's one scene as Jason was the paintball scene and it's fun it's funny that Dan Bradley. Not only he was a stunt coordinator, but he also directed um, the remake of Red Dawn from 2012. I think I kind of, I think, I think I kind of made the joke like I, my, uh, when I reviewed that film long ago. It was like it's directed by Jason Voorhees. Yeah, yeah, Jason Voorhees from the one scene, the paintball scene in Friday the 13th Part Six. <laughs> I think I did mention that mention that in the review of it. But yeah. So whatever that one paintball scene, that's Dan Bradley. But the rest of the whole movie before or after is C.J. Graham. And then he kills that one guy off screen. We find him, he's been hacked to pieces. And so yeah, so he gets some, some really good kills, some more good kills in this film. And... Um, Tom, when, when Tommy gets let go, he calls um, the office, which is play, um, which um, the do the sheriff's daughter helps Tommy. And for in for the in for an instance where um, where she wants to, they want to give him to the to the the camp, but um, they get pulled uh, as the cops, um, uh, sheriff's deputies are on them, and she's like, get down. And she's like, because she's driving. He tells him to get down. He put puts his, um. She, uh, he, 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 he's in her. He tells her. He tells her to get down. And his face is in her lap, and she's like looking at her crotch. <laughs> so that was, that was like a good sense of humor to it as well. And he's like, he's like, no, stay down. He's like, whatever you say. <laughs> but they get caught by the sheriff, her her dad, and more on Jason's list. Um, one of the counselors, you know, um, the guys with having sex with one of the girls in our in an RV. And as they're driving, um, Jason is in the tra is in the trailer, kills the girl, like slams her face right into the wall of the RV, it leaves an impression of the face, like which are those that was a good interesting death, at least like a an impression of the face. And then well this whole movie has a good has some good has a good soundtrack, yeah, like, like some good um song choices. Like I think three of them from Alice Cooper you have like um He's Back, the Man Behind the Mask by Alice Cooper, then you have um, Hard Rock Summer, and then he got teen and while the guy is driving the RV, he got Teenage Frankenstein playing. So Jason gets a gets a hunting knife and stabs him right through the head, causing the RV to crash. This scene right there, where he's standing on top of it. Good stunt sequence. And then he gets to the camp and kills this one other girl. The counselor twists her head off. And then with the other girl, the other the other uh, counselor. When she gets back in the cabin, you hear you, you, um, you see like a blood splat in the window, crash the window, and just brings her back in. You see blood everywhere when they see the whole cabin, and there's this one little girl. Jason goes to the cabin where all the children are sleeping. Sees the one little girl who sees him, just walk towards her like this. And he's like, like, you know, like praying, you know, but you know, for time for our wake, whatever. Pray for my soul to take, whatever. Um. And the sheriff's deputies, they get, they get there. One, um, Jason takes like an arrow, throws it at one cop's head, and the other deputy starts shooting at him. Bullets going right through him. He gets his head crushed. And then when the sheriff comes, um. And while that's going on, uh, Tommy and um, uh, Megan lets uh, Tommy out by holding the taking the other deputy's gun. He's like, with the, has that red light sign. He's like, wherever the red light shows, you bang. 
That's not a funny line of dialogue as well. So they get this they, as they're getting towards the Crystal Lake. Well, it is Crystal Lake, but it's called Forest Green. But um, Sheriff he she he comes face to face with Jason. He shoots him, but no, but no good. He starts running and he's hiding. And he he, he hears her daughter is calling for help. Now we're calling for her dad, and she's like, "No, not her." And she starts kicking Jason, hitting him with a branch. Then he starts hitting him in the face with a rock, and then he gets a a good death as well. Like Jason, like kind of like folds him in half like this, like the way um like um Deputy Briggs from the Blob, nineteen eighty eight remake, how he got the way he got folded in half by the Blob. It's like that. How Jason just go takes his body up by like this and just like <laughs> folds him in half like that. That was another good death as well. Um, and then to, to, um, Tommy just calling Jason, you know, Jason, it's me you want to remember? Come on, you pussy. Um, to lure him into the lake, and he gets, he's ready to get the chain. And Jason to, hops on top, breaks the, breaks the boat, and he has the chain around him. So that the body has a chain attached to the rock so he can't get off when he's on the noose. And then, uh, Megan starts the propeller, just gets right into Jason right here, <laughs> and then brings him, Tommy to shore, and it's like, he's home now, and then it just ends with Jason just lying there. So, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed Friday the 13th Part uh, 6, Jason Lives. Really good, uh, really good... Definitely, a, definitely, to my many fans, I would definitely say it is a favorite of the franchise. I would definitely say that. It's definitely one of my favorite ones of the franchise. It's not my mo It's not my absolute favorite of the franchise, but it's one of the ones. It's one of the really good ones of the franchise, definitely. And like I said, it's, it's very short. It's fast paced, only eighty seven minutes. I thought uh, the guy who played, which is another, another funny thing, is that uh, Jason lives is all because of Tommy, because. He was trying. He was thinking all the things that uh, what happened, and he deliberately lets Jason come back to life by stabbing him with that metal rod with a lightning um, strikes him. So really, enough, he's the one who brought Jason back to life. It's kind of funny that Jason lives. Oh, because it's all because of Tommy. <laughs> so I think that's all. Then Tom Matthews did good as Tommy Jarvis. Jennifer Cook, same thing with as uh, Megan. Is the uh, too bad about uh, the. Uh, the sheriff, um, played by David uh, Ke uh, Keegan. Anyway, and it was nice. It was nice to see Tony Goldwin. Oh, I forgot that there was a, there was a, I forgot to mention about a couple other deaths of their film. There was a grave digger. He was drinking the empty bottle, saying, "Girl, you're gonna be the death of me." He was gonna throw it away, but he doesn't hear it. Jason breaks the bottle and stabs him with it. And there was this other uh, couple. That they he stabs right through them with a machete. He was about to get on the bike, stabs through both of them. I forgot to mention those ones. But um, as I was saying, it was nice to see Tony Gold when I like him. So for a first film, a lot of a lot of actors start uh, first debut in horror, like Johnny Depp, Nightmare on Elm Street, or Jennifer Aston in, in Leprechaun. So it was good to see Tony Gold in this. I like him. Um. And some you get some really gory deaths as well, so and also including some cool ones as, as well too. And once again, good score, good score by uh, Harry Manfredini. And uh, C.J. Graham, I think, did really good as Jason Voorhees. You know, showing like uh, shows like uh, him doing some of his uh, army style stuff. It was cool to see that. Um. So yeah. Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, definitely another great one in the series. I really enjoyed it. And then when it comes to Part 7, which is my fav played by my favorite Jason guy to play. As many of the people who still says he's the still the best Jason, I would do agree. Next entry, you got Kane Hodder playing. And Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. So, but as for this one, i definitely give it a thumbs up for uh, Friday the 13th Part 6. Jason lives. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the next movie review. And on next will be Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven: The New Blood. Later.